Jonathan Holmes here from Destructoid.com here uh, in the inner sanctum of uh, Ignition Games E3 booth with Sawaki-san, the director and art director of the upcoming game El Shaddai. Sawaki-san, such a pleasure to meet you. How are you feeling? I've been having a great E3 with lots of really interesting interviews from the American press. Um, have a lot of people asked you about your past work on Okami and Devil May Cry? Because that's one of the things I wanted to address with you. Actually, everybody asks me about those games, especially Okami, and really I'm flattered because I'm very proud of them as well. What did you take from your experience on those past games as an art director to uh, El Shaddai? In the past, when I was just an art director, I got to spend a lot of time working on my own work and you know, perfecting it. But now, being in charge of everything, I have to manage a lot. And I realize it's a lot of work to create all this art. And you know, I also had to do all the art direction for the characters myself, so it was a tremendous amount of work. And luckily I had a great team that helped me out with everything. One of the things I love about El Shaddai is the amount of risks that you're taking with abstraction and visual ideas really being presented as metaphors on screen. And it seems like you have a lot of faith in your audience that they will understand uh, what you're trying to say. So that's really just a long compliment. Without a question. Yeah. <laughs> but um, was that something you did intentionally to kind of try to challenge your audience to understand really sophisticated, to me, abstract art in your game? So I definitely did feel as if I was taking a risk with how far I pushed the you know, abstract expressionist graphics. But I felt that users would be able to take this leap. And I feel that it's really important to make a game that isn't photorealistic. And it was my endeavor to, to make something that was you know, more dreamlike, abstract, and you know, something you haven't seen before. And I really think that the audience is, is looking for something that isn't like everything else. Another incredibly interesting aspect of El Shaddai is the fact that you are willing to take this ancient text, this kind of forgotten verse from the Old Testament, and adapt it into a video game for a global audience. Uh, what inspired you to make such a huge creative risk and leap? So actually the original concept for El Shaddai originated from our London office. They wanted to make a game based on the Book of Enoch, and to be honest, I had, I had never heard of that before. In Japan, it's not very common. Um, but I did a lot of research. Me and my team, we dove into it, we, wanted, we read the story, and to be honest, it's a little boring. So we wanted to make it a little more modern, a little more entertaining. So we took a few liberties with it and added elements uh, to make it palatable to a wider audience. But we do still stay true to the overall themes of the story. And you know, when adapting it, I drew upon lots of different influences. You know, all the previous games I've worked on, some really different kinds of art and inspiration. Um, and you know, I'm a little bit weird, so I think you ended up with a product that was you know couldn't have come out in any other set of circumstances. It was very special. Uh, I can't help but. Be excited to see these stickers. It, it gives me a very sweet sort of <laughs> Hayao Miyazaki sense, but with a slight twist, a demonic twist. And these are the, the Nephilim. These were angels, and I'll have to ask you, what are these things? Well, so when I was researching the ancient scriptures, they do mention these Nephilim, and what they are are the offspring of a human and a fallen angel. And really, this transgression against human evolution is what causes the Lord to send Enoch down to bring the angels back. Uh, but in the script, in the ancient scriptures, they're just described as being kind of giant humanoids with eyes and mouth and arms with no really distinct description. And that allowed me to think of what I felt they should be. And when I put my pencil down, suddenly this character was there. And I knew that it was the character that had to be in the game. And, you know, it is kind of cute, but in the game, when you play through, they're not all so cute, and they're very important to the story. I cannot wait to play this game. I can just sense that you followed your instincts and were willing to give us something that truly spoke to uh, who you are on a conscious and subconscious level. No one could consciously come up with that. That is a, a, like a dream come to life on the screen, and that's how the whole game is. It's just another long compliment. <laughs> it's kind of mandatory that I ask all the developers Report. I uh, talk to you about the Wii U, because that was the big announcement of the show. Um, what are your initial thoughts on the Wii U, Nintendo's new console? Are you interested in developing for it? Well, as a designer, I'm really excited about all the new possibilities for control that this offers. And it really is a new paradigm shift, and I'm a big fan of Nintendo in general, so I'm excited to see what they can do with it. Uh, and as a user, I definitely want to buy it. Uh, I'm a big fan of iPads, so tablet controls are something that are exciting to me.
Um, right now, I don't have any plans to make a game, but I would definitely be thinking about ideas. And I'm also excited about the interoperability with 3DS. I think that kind of connectivity could be really exciting in the future. And then if there's anything you want to tell the viewers about El Shaddai before we go, uh, feel free, the, the floor is open to you. Here at E3, everyone is talking about how much they enjoyed the, the graphics and the style of El Shaddai. We spent a lot of time on that, and I am an artist, but I really hope that the players will try the game and actually get their hands on it, because we spent just as much time on perfecting the gameplay. And although it seems very simple, making a game that simple takes a lot of time, and there's a lot of nuance and subtlety there. So now that the demo is available in America on PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade, I hope that users will try it for themselves and get their hands on it, because I think that's what you really have to do to truly understand Ocean. Thank you so much. All right, okay. Yeah, don't build smear it. It's kind of a wet, wet bag. Yeah. Living the dream. <laughs>